despite the figure editor being the most important window of Laser World Show Editor, most users will probably directly browse to the live show window. Because uh, what they want to do is just do some live laser show to music, to DJ playing, to band playing, but don't want to fumble around with creating own patterns, own um, own effects. So the Laser World Show Editor already comes with uh, preset pattern sets that can be used uh, with a live window and you can see all the different figures that are preset you can see them already here it's a it's a good number of different figures and all of them all of them oh you can see it's pretty many uh, all of them are already applied to the live window what you can see here and I, I just uh, scale that a bit we don't need the figures uh, at the moment I just Get them out of the window. Um, what you can see here is the live interface. Um, we already have loaded a live show so you can see that up here it says default live show. This is the one that comes with the laser world show editor. Of course uh, this is highly suggested. You, you can make your own pattern sets, your own shows, you can configure whatever you want to have here and this is very versatile and easy to operate. What you can see here, it's not it's not straight columns, cause um, the alignment of the individual patterns is similar to your computer keyboard. So what you also can see is it's um, it's the the characters up here. We've got uh, the same ones as on your keyboard. So, so I'm just pressing the key one, and it selects the pattern number one. Select key two, three, four. And that's how I can swap between the different effects, the different uh, figures. Then there is more up here. We've got the F keys. The F keys are used for uh, switching between the different tabs. So you can see there is many, many different effects um, on different pages. By unselecting F1, if I press it again, we're coming to F0, which is the initial start page. For blackout, just hit space, and you can see there is no figure attached to the uh, to the space bar. You can do that, but it's suggested to keep that as shut off as blackout button. Okay, so let's see what options we have up here. First of all, most important is um, the uh, mapping to the different output channels. If I just have one scanner, one interface, this is all fine. But if I have more than that, I need to apply uh, the pattern output to the different scanners. And this happens here. So page A, page B, page C, you can all apply these effects to the different, different hardware interfaces here. So if you select those ones, for example, then I have a, a proper four scanner output and it outputs to four hardware interfaces, if mapped correctly, of course. This mapping refers to the, uh, to the hardware mapping in the options section where you can map the interfaces to the very pages and the output tracks. But this is in a different uh, tutorial video. Uh, I said, uh, if you don't understand that, please uh, watch the other tutorial video first. Then we have, of course, laser on for switching on the output. Um, if we switch it on, then output happens. As I don't have an interface connected at the moment, um, I don't see anything. But uh, at least the visualization opens up you see here it's my simulation my simulator and it's already playing the pattern I selected here ah what you can see now is um, it's the four interface output I just selected by ticking the boxes here okay um, let's see what's what's happening here um, we have different faders um, I personally love faders because faders allow for smooth handling of the lace. It's not that harsh uh, changing of figures and all that. It's just a, a smooth thing you can use. You can see you have 
uh, the dimming feature here. Um, at least, of course, you need analog modulated lasers. But um, this is a nice feature I often use. Um, the same is with the speed. And you can apply rotation effects here. Pretty simple. So this does not be this does not need to be programmed initially for the for the figure but can be applied later on here with the effects what you can see is we have um five faders here but we have uh the possibility to apply different effects to these five faders um this is very very versatile because the five faders are only the visible ones here on the screen if you use the live window with a MIDI controller or a DMX controller, um, it's not necessary to uh, to be limited to five faders. You can use even more uh, by mapping those ones you, you have not selected to uh, to faders or, or other other uh, controls. Um, so this is this is also a possibility. But usually for for normal control, five are more than fine. Those, by the way, do pretty well with the touch screen, so you can use those faders, sliders uh, with the touch screen as well. Um, this section here allows for um, applying DMX values for different patterns, so you can remote control the uh, laser world, show it in a live window through your preferred DMX controller. This can be a Grand MA, this can be a cheap controller, whatever. You can do all the DMX mapping and all the uh, DMX assignment here. So each pattern can be assigned to a certain DMX value. Each uh, fader can be uh, uh, assigned to certain values. And this makes it easy to remote control the software with DMX. Uh, especially for nightclubs or for live shows where you don't want to have a computer on your on your desk but just want to have one lighting controller this is a good thing because you can place the computer underneath your desk and um, just remote control the software same applies for the MIDI mapping you can apply um, each uh, figure each each key in this case to, um, to a MIDI channel the same is with the faders here and uh, then you can remote control the software with MIDI. And it works like a charm. It's a, it's a really great feature, so I like it very much. Yeah, basically, this is the, the general overview over the live window. One important thing to know about the, uh, the live window is how to assign the figures to the key and this is a separate tutorial I have assigning figures to keys because these figures are linked to the very key and it's important to understand that because um, um, otherwise you, you cannot call the figures properly. This applies to the timeline editor as well.